Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Jocelyn and thanks for watching this video. If this is the first time you're coming to my video, I am a myself the PhD reseller and today I'm going to talk about um, some things that I've been noticing more on both YouTube and, and the Facebook groups about people that are criticizing YouTube videos. And I have a guest here today and this is Hannah Montana. Don't wake the sleeping giant. She's nice and passed out today. But I wanted to talk about a little bit what I'm seeing for people who are maybe criticizing people who are on YouTube. And and even people who, are, who have big who have big YouTube followers and their big YouTube channels or even say, you know, maybe I'm responsible for doing some of this stuff. And what is the people what is the problem that people are having? They're saying that YouTube videos are leading people astray, that they're not being really honest and they're not being transparent and they're leading people astray. And I watched this really sad video and I felt I felt bad for some, this young this young girl. I shouldn't say young girl, a young woman who was very upset because she said she was closing up her reselling business because she felt that um, that that people who are on YouTube should be more socially responsible and actually talk more about what the reality is of of being a uh, being a reseller. And I get that. I I I absolutely get that and I was thinking about it's like you know here's the deal about reselling videos and I, and I put them like in a pyramid where I think where you're at in your reselling journey is where you're going to fit at so at the bottom of this pyramid it's it's the whole like this is how much money I made and let's go thrifting with me and let's look at this and I bought out every garage sale and there's nothing wrong with these I've watched all three levels of these videos and I call these entertainment these are for entertainment purposes only because honestly the problem with looking at these videos what's nice about these videos is you learn a lot I've watched these videos and said you know I've gone out and looked for particular items this is these are things that people are doing first time I went to the Goodwill bins I looked at one just to see you know what was it like and it's for entertainment purposes only the problem with those videos is are are they overinflating things? Maybe. I don't know. It's the internet. It's YouTube. You can't take everything that somebody says for as gospel truth. You've got to be able to say, you know what, I don't know their model. This morning I was I made a comment on somebody who was on a, on a Facebook page and, and she was so upset because she said to me, There's something must be wrong with my eBay. Because I'm not getting any sales that's broken. I said, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on. I, I highly doubt if your eBay account is broken. I mean, she was just adamant that it's broken. And she said, there are all these people who are making tons of money out there. I said, you have no clue what their business model is. You could, they could have more sales than you do, but you might be able to source more cheaply and you might have more money in the bank. Watch the video about the young man who made over a million dollars in in revenue and ended up with a hundred thousand dollars in profit. That is equivalent to earning one thousand dollars in sales, and then in the end of the month, at the bank have sixty six bucks in it. I know I do a lot better than that, even though the guy's doing a lot better than I am. And of course, hundred thousand dollars is a lot different from sixty six bucks. But I said, you don't know what their model is. You don't know if I'm not accusing anybody saying that they're lying or anything of that nature. I, I don't know. I take everything with a grain of salt. They may be telling the truth, maybe lying. I don't really care. The other thing is you don't know what they're selling. You don't know. And you can pick up little tidbits on, on stuff when, especially when you talk about the next one, where people say, it took me a year to sell this thing. Or you don't know how many how much other pallets are doing, or if they're if they're sourcing also, they might be at the thrift stores, but at the same time, they've got pallets coming in. Or they're doing hard goods. They, they, it's just for entertainment purposes only. Now, have I been, um, have I watched videos and gone out and picked up some bad stuff? Mm -hmm. Yep. Have I watched some videos and picked up some good stuff? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Overall, you need to make sure that you are staying confined into whatever it is especially financially you can afford one of the hardest things that I see is when people come on like a Facebook group and they say I, I need to earn some money and I'm about to go and 
go thrifting. And shit. Now, if you want to earn some money because you have some extra money, you want to earn money, and that's fine. But if you're like, I'm broke, and I'm not going to go out thrifting, what should I buy? And I say, stop. You have probably got a lot of stuff of uh, under your roof, in, the, in your house. If you don't have any money, this is not a fast. This is, I don't care what anybody says. Have I sold things that have sold quickly? Absolutely. Have I got things that took a year to sell? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do things sell in 30 days? It's all over the place. If you get enough stuff in your stuff, in your store, you're going to have stuff that never sells. You're going to have stuff that sells like that. You're going to have stuff that sits. It is a roller coaster. So only source and spend money on what you can afford. Now, at first, yeah, you're going to have to... Be, I, you know, I did a little bit of more sourcing at the beginning, and then when I started to realizing that the sourcing was taking over, where I was sourcing, where the the profit at the end was paying for the sourcing, and I was like, I got enough stuff, I'm going to stop sourcing, and I've actually reduced significant. I still go out there every now and then. I, hey, it's a, it's a it's a hit. I gotta get a hit. I gotta get a I gotta get a thrifting hit. But I noticed, like after I stopped. I actually have more money in the bank. So, can they lead you astray? No, because it's your choice. It's your choice to go out there and purchase the items. You have to take everything with a grain of salt. You shouldn't do anything full on. Right? You, I wouldn't, if I needed my bathroom to remodeled, I wouldn't say, I'm going to remodel my bathroom, remodel the, the downstairs, the garage, all this kind of stuff all at the same time. Take a little bit of chunks at a time. Take them for what they are. They're entertainment. You can still learn from things. The other issue is that they're one off. If you are watching these videos and you're getting frustrated because you're going out and you're like, I can't find them, that's because they're one off things. Oftentimes we have things that are multiple quantities of stuff that we can actually put in that I'm not just doing one of everything all the time. And I'll tell you, multiple quantities do a lot better than things that are that are single quantity. The second part of the pyramid is I say those are things that are information, that they do provide you a little bit more information versus entertainment. And typically these are like the what's sold videos. This is what's sold, which I think has a little bit more information to them because you can be at a, and, and they'll take little screenshots and say, this is, you know, this is how much it comps for. I don't care what the comps are. I've had stuff where I've, I've comped them and got home and I'm still sitting in here and still trying to sell them. There is no guarantee for any of this. So don't don't get mad at people and you say, you know, I'm not going to watch these people anymore. They're information. It tells you some stuff. And this is where you can find out a lot more about their business, especially the ones that say, this is how much I bought it for. This is where I got it from. And this is what the profit I made at the end of the month. Watch different videos. Watch the, the entertainment ones. Watch some of the informational ones. And at the apex, which is a little bit smaller, is the ones that do more business stuff where they talk about things like promoted listings and how to deal with motivation and what are the pros and cons of reselling. And I think that everybody kind of starts off at the bottom. Everybody is like, you know, where do I start? How do I get started on this? All right, you get started and then you're like, okay, now maybe I'm out there and I'm really not knowing anything. I'm going to go to the informational stuff. And then you say, now I'm really interested in, in creating this as a business and not just a hobby. And you go up to the third one. And as they do that, the, the viewership just, just gets slightly. These are, are going to have more viewers at the bottom. And then it gets a little bit um, tighter at the top. I employ you to watch all of them. I, I've watched all of them. I do. I've done all three of them. I've done what sold videos. I got a haul video, which I haven't um, posted yet. And but most of my stuff is at the top is the, is the apex because I do try to be transparent and try to tell people about things to help you in your reselling business, the good stuff and the bad stuff. I don't just tell you that, hey, I go out there and, you know, I kill it every day. I tell you, you know, sometimes it doesn't that, that, that didn't work. Or you know, I think my very first video, I said I made $900 in a week in sales and ended up with like freaking $100 in profit. And what was the reason by that? So if you find that all they do is talk about um, the positives, you know, find somebody else who gives a little bit more reality. And I, and I, the last thing I say is, you know, 
for me, for myself, I think all of them are fine. I don't have any problem with any of them. I choose to look at the ones that are, are higher on the apex because that's where I'm at myself. Like how do you know, how do I get to be better at my business? Because even growing, I'm, I'm still growing myself and I need to learn things. I will tell you two two types of videos I don't like to watch is highly negative. And I and I realize one of my I have a couple of videos that are highly negative, like the DH DH gate scam and but that's just reality. And then like one about, you know, new sellers and stuff. But the the channels that oh gosh, where they just for an hour they just bitch and moan and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's really you know, it's really not that complicated. It's it, it's challenging, but you're just selling stuff and oh this is this is how it works and it was working fine and they're not changing. Are you gonna sell? I don't know, but I've written all these letters. Okay. If you really got that much time on your hand to be all that upset over item specifics or category changes, you might need a hobby. The second one that I don't like to watch is clickbaits. And I think that there are some good YouTube people out there that I used to watch, but I was like, you're just clickbait. What does clickbait mean? If I was going to tell you about, I said, our, you know, the title of this, I haven't figured out the title, will be something like, are YouTubers, at, or, or, is your business failing as a YouTubers or something like that? And then I started off with a what sold video and I talked to you for 20 minutes about what sold and then I spend five minutes talking about what the topic was that's clickbait that has everything to do with monetization has nothing to do with actually providing you with any real information and i stop watching those videos but if you like those nothing wrong with it nothing wrong i'll try to support everybody but um try to find different ones i sometimes it takes some digging through youtube has it has a tendency to push certain videos up and so the same ones i'm like YouTube. I don't watch all videos anymore. Stop sending me those. Send me some smaller people who are actually doing more things about the business portion. Don't you see? That's the ones that I like. Watch, but it just takes you to, you know, the algorithms to catch up. So overall, are YouTube people at fault for giving people a, a false sense of what reselling is like? No, I don't think so. You just got to take everything you learn it to figure out which ones do you like if you're finding that certain videos aren't giving you anything that you need maybe you just want to watch those maybe you just find it to be fun but if you want to transition to other different levels of that pyramid that i did then just find some different people to look at after a while guess what happens when you stop watching those videos youtube figures out that you don't want to watch those and will stop showing those to you so let me know what you think if you do you think put in the comments are you like yeah youtube people are just slimy scammy they just they don't really care about i don't believe so i don't i, I honestly don't believe that most people go out there and you know i know i don't i don't think other people do have they sure yeah whatever i'm gonna stop anyways like this channel give it a video if you like this sort of content and see you at the next time and thanks for joining me today and yeah put in your comments i'm just like all over the place this is like my third video for today um put in your comments uh anything that you find that you think is do you agree with me do you think they're all scammy and scummy do you, you're like girl you're one of those too you're ain't no different or or you say yes you're you're right they're they're different varieties and it's up to you as a youtube watcher to figure out um to take everything and say some things are going to be truthful, some things are not. And then, yeah, that's it. See you later. Bye. Say bye-bye, Hannah. Yeah, she, she out, y'all. She out. See you later. Bye.